I took a deep breath, hoping it would cal make me calm down a little bit. Okay, for now, I have two options for you. First, you can, if you want to, of course, stay here in my house. You can come with me when I'm working, since there isn't anyone else to take care of you here. Well, the second option is, you can use your money to stay in a hotel. I'm still going to keep... Blah, fuck. I'm still going to help you look for your relatives either way. I come from a rich family, so it, so it wouldn't be hard to find someone who knows you. What do you say? If so, I think I'll stay here. Are you sure? You won't get a... You won't get a spring bed and a warm blanket here. I don't like being alone and I'm afraid of strangers. It sounded pretty ridiculous that she was starving with all that money. Well, if she really is afraid of strangers, and if you're afraid of strangers, shouldn't you be scared of me? Mm, of course not. You're pretty familiar to me. We just met today. You look like Tom, my favorite guitarist. Is he handsome? Yeah. Strange girl, if you want to sleep, just go into my room. It's the one on the right. Don't forget to lock the door. Sarah nodded and got up. I thought she was going to bed, but she turned on the TV instead. She was really making herself comfortable. Tongue and jelly. Ah, oh, whatever. I want to clean up this mess first. I'm home. I turned my head to the voice. My sister has just arrived. Hey, where have you been? School, of course. Who's that little girl? Don't lie to me. Your teacher texted me earlier today saying she said that she didn't come home today. She didn't come today, and she might be small, but she's older than you. Uh, I knew people were coming here. Some Kapok gang people are hanging around around my school, so I ditched my class. Today is the third day. So you didn't come because of that? Well, they didn't do anything, though. They were just hanging around there. Now I understood. It was all because of me. Sorry, sis, I doubted you. It was my fault after all. And it was my fault all because I was in the Kapok gang. They even got my family involved. I'll go with you tomorrow. I need to teach them a lesson. I don't think that's necessary. It looks like they just want to come with us or we'll bring your house. They just want to say, come with us or we'll bring your house down. Kinda weird. <laughs> It's like, I don't think they want to hurt us. They just keep saying, hey, if you show your face around here, I'm going to slit your throat in your sleep. But I don't think they're, like, have any malice. <sighs> kind of weird. If they want to bring the house down, why don't they just burn it? It'd be easier for them. Well, now that the house is messed up, they don't have to rejoin them anymore. I wish things were that easy. The Kapok gang never let their prey escape. Ah... Uh... Sarah's voice has broke the conversation. I almost forgot that she's been watching TV all this time. It was breaking news. What's strange is, the news doesn't show the news anchor as usual, but rather an old man with glasses on a wheelchair. My name is Alfred Ravenfield. I'm looking for my only granddaughter. Her name is Sarah. If you see the girl with the description, please contact us immediately. You can give us information that leads to her, or if you can bring her back to us, we will give you a reward of one billion rupiah. One billion? <laughs> Welcome to the world of the plastic beach. The girl is worth a billion? I shouldn't be this surprised. She's carrying lots of money anyway. Hey, Sarah? It's true that my grand grandfather is the only one left in the family. I don't remember his face, though. Is he really my grandfather? This has got to be a conspiracy. That old man has got to be hired by an organization. Enough, I'm tired of all your conspiracies. Why don't you just call them? Sarah will know whether they're real or not. Something's weird. Living with the Kapok gang all these years made it hard for you to believe anyone. Please understand that sometimes the world isn't as cruel as you think. But something is definitely weird. Theme of conspiracy plays. What is? I'm not sure. Something's definitely weird, but I couldn't put my finger on it. So, Sarah, did you know that old man? Sarah didn't know what to say. She turned to me as if she wanted me to protect her. She's not a bad person, my sister. She looked a bit relieved. I don't know for sure, but my parents told me that I do have a grandfather. Hmm. Let's talk about it more tomorrow. I'm tired after cleaning all this mess. Can I sleep in your room? Uh, what happened to your room? I told Sarah to use it. 
she can sleep in my room. She doesn't like strangers. Well, you're a stranger too. Besides, you're a guy and she's a girl. It's safer for her to sleep with me. <laughs> Hi, I'll just sleep with Sif. No, please, just don't. What's with you? It's all right. Besides, I'm not. Th I'm not into little girls. Just go ahead and sleep. God. Just go ahead and sleep, all right, Sarah. Let's sleep. Come on. My sister pulled Sarah into her room. And their figures seemed to have entered that room. I sat on her old couch and lit up my cigarette. Today was a disaster. Today was disaster. The next day. The cock a doodle doo sound woke me up gently. It took a few more seconds to synchronize my body and soul in order to be able to function normally. After I was fully awake, I got up and went to wash my face. Next thing to do was checking for my supply of food. Uh, no time to go to the money chain change her and change my dollars from Sarah's stash to buy some local food the only hope I have is my wallet which as usual is on the brink of death um, there it is just gotta due to some kind of circumstance I saved half of my valuables at home shortly after getting my money I went to our neighboring food stall to buy three bowls of chicken porridge after preparing everything I knocked on my sister's room and then woke them up brother what now yeah. Sarah, what else? Oh, I'll call that old man later. I have to go to work for now. I said this while feeding myself a spoonful of porridge leisurely. My sister was silent for a moment. Sarah, with the speed of a culinary expert, tried to guess the materials for the food. While I was sitting in front of the TV, it came to the realization that the frequency of appearance of news for Sarah's whereabouts exceeded my favorite food commercial. Looking out for it every day, huh? Yeah, it's not that strange. Someone who can afford offering one billion rupees for the news of a girl's whereabouts can afford to buy commercial time. After making sure about the number to call, I called that number. And unfortunately, I haven't paid for my telephone bill and couldn't use its phone service for some time. I think I can use my office phone. After waiting a few minutes until my sister's ready to go to school and wait for Sarah to take a bath, we parted. But before that... It looks like she had something to say. Don't forget, if you return Sarah to her grandpa, treat me. You mean, one billion, enough amount to enjoy Nasiro, Naziram's for our, I don't know, Ramas, I, I don't know what that is, uh, for our family or for our entire life. You got a point. I nodded and we finally parted. What are you whispering? Hmm. Nah, family problems. Oh. With a confused look, Sarah followed behind me. A few minutes later. There is still time until work. I think I'll take her around the mall. This is... Oh, but at this hour, nothing's open. Should I skip work? I always make it for work. Skipping once or twice won't change my already bad reputation. If I get fired, let it be. I'm not that dumb to let a girl with one billion rupees on her tag without any defense. I borrowed my sister's hoodie, and I think it fits her well. Sarah? Mm -hmm. Where do you want to go? I mean, somewhere you want to go. Especially with... Especially those of which are not far from here. No. Really, then? Then want to buy something? No. Shall I call your grandpa now? Okay. Actually, I feel bad for not asking you. As... As if she understood the feeling of my almost empty wallet, Sarah gave me the dollars in her pocket. Here. Sorry. It's okay. Hmm. Since I was so confused at what I was really doing, should I call Sarah's grandpa? I really want to clarify whether he is Sarah's real grandpa. Something does sound fishy. Why must it be one billion? Why don't they just make it a hundred million and people would still chase and look for her? Maybe it's just me, but the degree of despair for someone looking for something is apparent from the amount of sacrifice that can be done. The more frustrated someone to, f uh, someone to find something, the bigger the value can, can be better staked. Not that I'm making light of her, but this one billion fit for just the reward? They could just use the money to rent private eyes, paying for independent investigator detectives or other such things. Why must it be one billion and be on TV? 
Is this the love of a grandpa for a granddaughter? I don't believe there is any such feeling. Even though I saved her because I want that money, even though at the start I helped her because of pity, but if at the end I got the prize, it doesn't mean that I am lucky? Then... The foundation of transaction is taking into mind that the value gotten from a valuable than the value traded for. There is no one in this world that wants to get the short end of the stick. Why must it be one billion for the reward? What does that mean, Sarah's... I Hang on. I just gotta, just gotta adjust my eyes here. I've been saying a lot of words. Uh, does that mean Sarah has value for more than that amount of money? The life of a human cannot be exchanged for money. Damn it, those naive words don't show up in my head. Is that amount of money not good enough for them? Why? And why am I just spinning around in a circle? I know. The passbook. The passbook she had. I know... I know they were looking for something. Sarah, hand me the passbook and that piece of paper you got. Without asking too much, Sarah gave, gave them to me as if she didn't know the value of these pieces of paper. Looking at it, you... Even God knows how many times the numbers just don't seem real to me. The nominal exceeds even the table's grid. It's just too much. Why don't they just spread it around to the other bank? And I notice the 32 numbers on the piece of paper. 2543245235678383. It's too random. Even if, even if you were about to make it into a mathematical equation, I'm sure it takes a hell... A hell lit of extra money to remember all those number. Is something wrong, Brother Seven? No. Here, take the passbook. But to be safe, I'll keep the piece of paper. Okay. What the hell's wrong with me? Is living for many years with the Kapot gang turned me into a stereotypic into a typical stereotype guy? It's easy for me to think that Sarah's grandpa loved her so much. For he would not hesitate to spend that much money. He truly loves Sarah. It's easy. So why does my body refuse and just say that this is just a conspiracy? Is it really a conspiracy? Or has my heart hardened like a rock to the point where I can't see the logic that Sarah's grandpa really loves Sarah? Then, why do I do this much? It's easier for me to just give Sarah her grandpa and take the prize money and leave as if nothing was my, if everything was not my problem. Arg, why does my brain work this much? I think for now, I'll just head for the office with Sarah, of course. Just say it. Oh my god. Just... God damn. God damn, guy. Who's the kid? None of your business, hag. <laughs> Eh, are you still angry for yesterday? Shut it, don't bug me. I tried to do my job as fast as a lightning. As a single lightning. After I finished my job, as usual, Sarah lazed around the office. Mr. Joker read a magazine that looks like this time it is an adult magazine. Hey, don't let Sarah see it, you dirty old man. Sarah was playing with her fingers due to boredom, sitting quietly in the corner of her office, but it looks like the witch hag won't let her be. What's your name? Want to read a magazine? Sarah offered the magazine on her desk. It looks like a fashion magazine, but I thought she didn't give any respond. And as usual, she looked at me, looking for a help. Don't disturb her, hag. She's not comfortable with people she doesn't know. Is that so? Sarah finally gave up when, it, when in the next few tries she did only manage to make her shake her head. She. Yeah, finally she returned to reading her magazine unenthusiastically. A few minutes later, silence enveloped the room. Only the sounds of my fingers hitting the keyboard can be heard. I'm in. What? Huh? Shut up. Out of the blue, they yelled at almost the same time, hurting my ears. Ah, oh, sorry. While well, throwing me an up, apologetic look, she calmed herself down. And why the sudden surprise? Hey, just for a minute... I'm going to finish in a bit more. Sarah nodded and looked a bit relieved. Haha, <laughs> her expression was funny. Hey, would you accompany for me for a second? Sarah, of course, was surprised by her initiative. And 
and tried to refuse by shaking her head while looking at the floor. Just for a few moments, I'm one of Brother Seven's friends. Don't be afraid. Sarah's round eyes were directed towards me, looking for help as usual. I said, stop bugging her. I just want to buy her something. She must be bored. Leave her alone. I'm almost finished with my work. Just for a bit. Yeah, poor girl. She's so pale. That time, Mr. Joko also chipped in. What's up with you guys? I thought you weren't the type of people who like children. Especially Mr. Joko. Oh, Brother Seven, I gotta go. Here, let me take you there. No, I'll take you there. Oh? Uh, fuck this guy. This guy's, this guy's going to jail. It's Sheriff John Burnell in here. Stop it or I'll throw this monitor. This is weird. I approached Sarah and held her hand. She must be afraid of them. What's with you guys? I said it with the coldest tone I can make. I just want to help Sarah. Poor girl, she looks bored in here. How'd you know her name? Huh? You fool! I ask you again, how'd you know her name? I haven't in even introduced her to you yet, and she didn't say anything as well. Err. Show me the magazine in your hand. Huh? What for? You don't need this. Okay, this is getting weirder. The only logical explanation in this situation is they knew about Sarah, and they're after the reward. Back off, or else. As they hear my threat, they step back. I take Sarah out of the office and lock behind both of my senior inside. I start thinking of a place where we won't stand up. A shopping mall. Kind of risky. I don't think that would be the best place to hide. The best place for hiding is in a normal plane site. Perfect. We can just waltz in here calmly. As long as we stay calm and act casually, no one would recognize her here. We walked around and around, keeping ourselves moving. I exchanged some of the money Sarah had to Rupia, so money won't be a problem for now. What's going to be a real problem is the reward. The reward offered to Sarah is like a hundred times the money in my pockets. I must stay calm, even in this situation haunting us. As we walk around, I see two familiar faces in front of my face. The two person are the weirdest couple I've ever met. That time when I was in part of the Kapot game, I hunted them down with, with no particular reason. But that's in the past. That's the old me. I wouldn't hunt them down for no reason now. I have to have a reason now. We're friends now, and they're the reason I quit the Kapot gang. You can say they're my hero. Well, I never said it to them, though. The long-haired girl is walking elegantly, as if it's the most natural thing for her. When she walks, you can see the flowers blooming on the path she traveled. A natural beauty, even within how me make her. Her calm way of speaking, the way she dresses, is impossible for me to forget. Her male companion is walking beside her, letting out different emotions. <laughs> His messy... <laughs> he feels different things than she feels. Uh, his messy black hair, cool expression on his face, his sarcasm. This just fucking squall? They must be Remy and Ryzen. R Remy, Ryzen! They suddenly stopped talking to each other and turned their eyes to me when they heard my voice. Ah, Seven. Ah, at least call him Uncle. He's older than you. No way, not a chance. Imagine calling Seven Uncle. Uncle Seven. Ugh, gross. It's like I'm in a moral girl or something. Who told you to use the erotic tone? Getting in a useless debate is the everyday life for them. Well, it's been some time after we last met. I kind of miss them. Is this Skater Boy? No. Complicated? No, it's not. Hey, I'm not that old. Don't call me uncle. How about Pops, then? Nah, it won't do. Enemy is showing her bored expression. So it's been a while, huh? Ryzen shakes my hand. Remy follows her. They seem to have something as so shockingly as they commented. I thought you were done with the bad guys, but for kidnapping a little girl as well? Who the heck is kidnapping a girl and she's 16 for your information? 16 is considered underage. Besides, who is she? Don't tell me you found her lying on the street or something. Actually, I did. 
Ryzen and Remy can't see Sarah's face clearly because of the hoodie she's wearing. Sarah seems scared of them. She covers herself with my body. Remy and Ryzen didn't say a thing, but I know that the next thing that'll come out of their mouths won't be good. Remy, call the cops. I'm on it. This is beyond horrible. To use a voodoo to entice... To entice... What? To use a voodoo to entice her. What's more, she's underaged. I'm out of here. Hey, that's a joke. We're kidding. That was too much. Hey, now, sorry. We were going to the Soto stall over there. Want to tag along? Not a bad idea. I got something to discuss anyway. I think I'll ask their opinion about what to do with Sarah. At least I can believe those two. You guys get along well as usual? Of course, I'm her slave. I'm not. Don't say such things. I want to live in the colonial period. You'll understand how sensitive those words are. God damn it, I want out of this. I didn't think it would even be this long. Which was stupid to think, because, like, all, of course it's going to be this long. It's going it's a visual novel. Aiden Renpai. I don't know when. But no, they wouldn't just, like, shit something out. No, they just spend all the time in the world building the characters. Building their little fetish world. They can just project themselves into this thing. What are you guys doing here? Oh, I'm buying this book when I meet this neat. Who are you calling a neat? You, duh, who else? I got a job. Ryzen is full of himself because of his job. He didn't attend college as far as I remember. I realize Remy, Remy's grinning. Ah, that's right, you. Ryzen hurriedly shut Remy's mouth as she would say something terribly bad. Hmm. My job requires me to keep my identity a secret. Please understand, it's not like I want to tell you. I don't want to tell you. Remy, who broke free from Ryzen's hold, is emanating a scary aura from her body. That's it. I want a divorce. A surprise from the word divorce made me spurt my coke. <laughs> Is that what they're calling it these days? Then why did you guys get married? When did you guys marry? When did we married to each other? Never. That's why I want a divorce right now. This is a preparation for the future. Uh, I can't do such a thing. You have the energy to make some hullabaloos. But you rather use it to some social activities. Now I think it's better than the introverted hobby you call a job. What are you donating to society? What are you donating to society? That's the big question on everyone's mind. What am I donating to society? What the fuck am I donating, dude? What am I donating? What am I donating? What am I donating? People who read my novels just realize that he has fallen into Remy's trap. It's too late to shut his mouth now. You're writing a novel. I want to comment any further. Okay, I'm done with this scene now. Hee <laughs> hee. So Sarah likes that. That's she's laughing. That's great. Everyone's amused. In the soda stall. Oh. I'm dead serious. My newest expansion, my favorite FPS game, took more than what my computer could give. And that's why I could use the money to upgrade it. Ah, so they know about the money and they all want a piece of it. You can say it was a joke. You won't spend all the money alone, right? I hear you guys are whispering clearly. We're just messing with you, man. It's a joke. Why don't you stop joking and start... Thinking this is a serious matter. There's a SWAT. The SWAT team might come. I'm talking about the one billion. Something's wrong. I can't put my finger on it. Our family's rich. One billion is not that big a deal to them. Ask Sarah what she wants. I never thought about her feelings. 
What if... What is it, Sarah? What if we call the person who said that he's my grandpa about he's my real grandpa or not? Sarah paused for a moment. I... I think it's not a problem if he was a fake, as long as someone's taking care of me, but I think he's my real grandpa. If not, why would he spend all the money for the reward? I feel the pain in my chest when I heard her desperate answer. No, if he wasn't your real grandfather, I won't let her have you. Awesome. Cool. The emotional part where you're supposed to shut up. I said two words and you said twelve. Who said more? Who? Hmm. Let's just go. That's just moving right along. So. Uh, oh, so wait, is he calling? Is he calling the grandpa now? He's like, hello, I'm Seth and Sarah's here with me. If you want her back, meet me on the road on the northern side of the football stadium. Hey, you sound like a kidnapper. Ah, oh, sorry, it's my old habit. Hey, you better talk to them again. They might get the wrong idea. Er, sorry. What was that food? You just sat on... Did you just lift sacks of rice or something? I'm just nervous, man. Uh, what do we do? Me and Ryzen are going back. Hey, who will accompany me here? Quit that. You aren't a baby anymore. You can throw dozens of bodyguards by yourself. You'll be okay. Well, that's only true when they aren't carrying any weapon with them. Otherwise, they'll turn me into a hornet's nest. Don't drag us along, then. Hey, relax. Nothing's gonna happen. Seven? 